Yeah, that, that was a talented yeah. cast. You mentioned Jane Curtin, uh, John Belushi, Gilda Rae. Lorraine Rand. Newman. Uh, who else was it? Dan Lorraine Ackroyd. Newman, Chevy Chase. I mean, that is an iconic yeah. cast right there. How how difficult did you take the news? I mean, you 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 auditioned with Gilda. Oh, she boy. You. When she passed away, how hard did that hit Man. you? That was a hard hit, John Sean. That was a hard hit. You made me as you're talking about it, man. Excuse me. She was such a beautiful lady, man. Okay? Such a talented, beautiful lady. And I had a whole lot of problems. Okay? While I was there. But I wasn't always on the positive side. I was very negative with a whole lot of people. Gilda was one of the few people that I always got along. She and Jane Curtin uh, were always cool with me, okay? But Gilda, man, when she, I knew before she died that she was suffering, right? And boy, 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 when she passed, um, uh, I don't want to do this on your show, okay? Uh, Uh, it was hard to take, and even now, as you can see, when I think about it, it's it just uh, she's such a brilliant, beautiful lady. Uh, yeah. yeah, she clearly must have been. Um, now we're talking easily thirty years, thirty plus years of her passing, and for it to invoke that type of emotion yeah. from you. You know, there are few people that come into our life. We know death yes. is a part of life. We, we we understand that one day we're not going to be here. But for you to be sitting here before me and to get this type of emotion, just thinking about this beautiful human being that yeah. passed through your life, that says yeah. so much about her and her impact in this world. Yeah. Wow. She was, she was something else. Okay. She was somewhere else. Yeah. Always easy to work with. Always easy, you know. I had never heard her say a bad thing about anybody. I'm sure she has, but I never heard. And very talent, very talent, tolerant. But like I'm saying, it wasn't, I wasn't always on the positive end. I was a lot of negative that was coming out of me. And she was very, very um, supportive and helpful. You know, speaking of being not so positive, uh, last time I sat down with you, you told me about a gentleman, uh, African-American, came on, uh, and I'm not sure if he came on to the show, but he was very outspoken about you being yes. on the show and went so far as to call you right. an Uncle right. Tom. You wouldn't mention his name, and I'm not asking no. you to mention it now, but if I, because I needed to do right. some research. If I mention his name, can I get a wink? Just to, uh, uh, I, I came up with Franklin AJ, a, a J, something like that. A, a, am I on the right track now? <sighs> All I got to say is you're pretty good uh, at your job. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, because I'm like, who could this have been? And God knows I went and I dug and I did some research. Like, who is this man? But I know your time on Saturday Night Live, it wasn't always no. positive. And you didn't always feel as uh, welcomed within the staff no. as you should have. You want to go into well, that? Well, like I said, I'm not, as a Buddhist, I take responsibility for my part of that. Okay? So a whole lot of negative stuff would come out of me. I was a coke fiend at the time. A whole lot of stuff I was doing that was clearly creating enemies, okay? But I didn't realize the extent of that. Because people, you know, a lot of times you're uh, hooked on a drug or addicted to it, uh, people should be thinking about helping you to rehab as opposed to coming down here judgmentally, which I didn't realize that. Um, so I was creating a whole lot of, but on the other hand, there was already a whole lot of racism among the writers that was a part of what was going on. 
Um, I'm talking about Michael O'Donoghue, for instance. You know, remember Michael O'Donoghue? You know, he, he, oh, he, absolutely. He, when I absolutely. came to the show, I knew that he was hooked to National Lampoon. So I attached that mystique to him. That he was radical, progressive, not, not racist, all of that, right? Kind of find out that was the exact opposite of what he was. Uh, he, oh my God, oh, yeah. Damn. Uh, I always tell the story. The first time we did a show, there was no role for me in anything, except there was this particular skit that had a doctor in it. And Michael had written it. So I said, well, Michael, why don't you let me play the doctor? He says to me, well, Garrett, people might be thrown by a black doctor. No, now, mind you, I'm from New Orleans, where from the time I could breathe, I was aware not only the fact that I was surrounded by black doctors, some female. But there are a whole lot of black PhDs in that college. And in places like DC, um, Fisk University, Spelman, all those people we have college black towns, you're surrounded with doctors, medical and PhD types. And the fact that this man who was attached to one of the most liberal so-called publications of that time had this racism in it through me and it it, it, it helped me a lot because it kept me keeping in focus. Because later on, we did do some things together. But I was always the fact where the fact his racism was the worst kind of had a lot of hubris in it. You know? Uh, yeah, it was like mm -hmm. the kind that was intellectually up there and I, you know, and I know it. And, uh, uh, so, but he wasn't the only one. You know, but for the most part, he was one of those who, um, his racism, uh, for me, uh, shocked me, and it was a part of how I had to deal with a couple other people, you know. But there were some people like Chevy Chase and like Alan Swindell who were on the other side, you know, because I didn't get a lot of people to write for me, but Chevy did, Alan Swindell did, uh, you know, to write for me, and I wrote for myself too, you know. But yeah, it was it was hard dealing with uh, that kind of hubris, or what? Because it was, it was that, that kind of intellectual kind that. Seem to think it really knows that it's racism is correct. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.